Welcome to Taylor Field, everybody, where the fans are breathing a tad easier after last week's win over Toronto. But the odds do not favor the home team today because the Eskimos are on one of those rolls that appears unstoppable. Their defense allowing 15 points a game, their offense scoring twice as many, and that's the reason for the CFL's best record of 9-1. and one. Saskatchewan, meanwhile, is focusing on a playoff spot, and a record of 5-5 five and five does not make that certain right now, to be sure. In the booth this afternoon are Steve Armitage and Ron Lancaster. Thank you, Scott. Good afternoon, everyone. We'll be paying close attention to the running game this afternoon, and it features two of the best in the game, Taylor against McRae. Yeah, and they have unique stories, too. You know, Reggie Taylor came over to Edmonton as a, an afterthought, a throw-in with that trade of Matt Dunnigan. Tim McRae comes to every year and has to fight for his job, but we have the second and third leading rushers in the CFL, and they're having good years, both of them averaging six points or six yards every time they touch a football. Reggie Taylor is a very exciting type of back. He can go the distance from anywhere on the field. The more you give him the football, the more you're going to get the big plays. Tim McRae, on the other hand, could have a little more trouble today. 154 yards last week against the Argonauts. If he has the big day for Saskatchewan, they have a chance to win this one. He's got to have a big one. Ron, I would expect that the Saskatchewan offense might throw a different wrinkle or two at the Eskimos defense. I think every team that plays the Eskimos tries to come up with something. I think Saskatchewan will go to the shotgun, get their quarterback back a little deeper, give him a little bit more time to throw, and hope that works for him. Well, a lot of teams have tried this season and failed. Scott? Well, Steve, many say the Eskimos' defense is the best the CFL has seen in ages. The heart of that defense, linebacker Danny Bass, will be our guest on Inside the CFL at halftime. And international football came to Regina last night. We'll have a feature report on the first Euro Can Bowl. That's at halftime. You're watching Foster's CFL on CBC, live from Regina. The CFL on CBC. Brought to you by Foster's Lager. Proud to bring you the best of the CFL. By Priority Courier. Official courier of the Canadian Football League. Good for football here at Taylor Field in Regina. Temperature 20 degrees Celsius. The wind always a factor at Taylor Field. Coming out of the north at 25 kilometers per hour. And the forecast for partial cloud. We're keeping our fingers crossed that it won't rain here at Taylor Field this afternoon. The officiating team this afternoon, Dave Yule as a referee. He'll be assisted by Brian McKee, Ed Dunn, Ross Saunders, Bob Bryan, and Al McCollman. Expected to start a quarterback for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders this afternoon, Kent Austin. And we can expect to see the shotgun formation. And working the offense for the Edmonton Eskimos, Tracy Ham, who is having a tremendous year for the Eskimos, certainly in the last four or five weeks. The game is underway, and right away a mistake by Keith Wright is costly for the Eskimos. You know, when you kick the ball off, they have the wind at their back. That ball gets in that wind. It comes down a little bit hard into the side. Puts Tracy Ham in not the greatest field position to start. You see those eight interceptions. A little misleading. He threw six of them in their only loss of the season this year in Toronto. Other than that, he's had an outstanding season. Eskimos averaging 33 points a game on offense. A 65-yard kick from Dave Ridgeway, and it puts the Eskimos in a bit of a hole to get this first quarter underway. First and 10 Eskimos, the ball at the nine-yard line. And they are going nowhere. Swarm defense on the part of the Saskatchewan Rump Riders. I think you have to stop Reggie Taylor. If you allow him to get the running game going, it really helps a quarterback like Ham. That's why when he carries the football, get a bunch of people around him. Craig Ellis, 50 receptions. He's having a heck of a year for him. Keith Wright has picked up the slack outside. That's the reason for allowing a guy like Stephon Jones to go to Ottawa. Loss of one yard on the play. Make it second and 11. Ham into the end zone, but he's got some room now. Fires incomplete. He was looking for Keith Wright downfield, but he overthrew it. Even if he'd have run the football, he'd had a little bit of trouble getting to that first and 10 marker. It was out around the 19-yard line, and he was in the end zone. He took a look, but 19 yards is a long way to run against anybody. Well, when we talked to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders coaching staff, the one thing they said they wanted to do early was put as much pressure on Tracy Ham as they could. Yeah, they said they were going to sacrifice a little bit of the upfield speed from Jerison and Goldsmith. They were going to try to sit him at six yards, keep Ham in the pocket. A punting situation for the Eskimos. Cowrick didn't get all of that. 
Richie Hall. Still going. Hall tripped up at the 35. Well, a lot of the fans will be happy with Kent Austin getting a chance to start. I think he earned it. I don't think Gregory had a choice. He came in last week, pulled out a win against Toronto with the Dome. Deserves the chance to start. I think a lot of people forget he was the starter for the opening game of the 1989 season. He had earned it through preseason. It's time for him to come back now. Well, the coaches said they might go with the shotgun early, but not on the first series anyway. The pitch to McCray. McCray down across the 30-yard line. You know, we talked about Tim McCray in the opening about if he has a big game, they have a chance. But I believe you're going to have to throw the football. That means Fairholm, Elgard, Narcisse are going to have to have big games. I know they're interested in Gene the Taylor, the new wide receiver, but I think those three have carried it most of the season. They've got to continue it. Second and six for the Rough Riders. The ball spotted at the 29-yard line. A lot of play action to the right side. In and out of the arms of the intended receiver, Milson Jones. We saw him go to the shotgun that time. What we were told is that Kent Austin has a tendency on his drop to set short. He stops at six yards. He said, if we go to the shotgun, we can force him to get a little bit deeper. And against a team that wants to get the pressure that the Eskimos do, a deep drop is essential. You must get away from that rush. They'd like to see him back about nine yards. They fake McCray. And he'll be close to the first down, depending on where they mark it. A big gamble early by the Rough Riders. Great spot to gamble. You got the wind at your back. You got great field position. A direct snap to McCray around the left side out of the punt formation. Uh, I think it's great. Good way, good place to go. We're going to get a good look at it. Coming your way, right to you. They're going to measure for the first and ten, but here's Tim McCray, right to him. Now, come outside where they're trying to block everybody down. Kick him out. Good block. Good block by Milson Jones, and then McCray just turns up field. All Dag signals first down. Referee agrees. They get the first down by three quarters of a length of the football to keep the drive alive. Well, Danny Bass, I think anywhere on a football field, Dan Bass is the guy to, to go with. Moses. Three interceptions, five fumble recoveries, 36 tackles, four sacks. He does it all. Stanley Blair, very physical on the corner. Stuman rushing from the outside. Uh, you can pick anyone on De Eskimo's defense. They're all outstanding. Austin from the shotgun. First and ten. Puts it up. And it's complete to Narcisse. Narcisse goes out of bounds. Just shy of the 15-yard line. What was nice about that with Narcisse is he took, he took Blair a long way downfield. We'll see him come off the football. Watch him take Stanley Blair down. But watch what he does when he makes his break. Watch how far he comes back to give the quarterback a target. Look at that. At least five, six yards. You a defensive back can't stay with you that long. That was a long throw for Kent Austin that time. Second and one, ball at the 15. They give to Jones, it goes nowhere. Only needed the one yard. Leroy Blue in there to make the tackle for the Eskimos. The first indication is they have enough yardage for the first down. So the Riders with the winner side, Edmonton number 20, first down. Taking advantage of the wind and the penalty against the Edmonton Eskimos, they spot the ball at the 10. That'll be first and goal for the Rough Riders. Austin just floats it in the end over the head of Elgar. He had to let it go before he wanted to. You had Brett Williams right on top of Austin. That's not a bad quote John told us today. The Eskimos' best offense is a defense. The unit dominates. And you know what? What he's saying is they get him such a great field position that the Eskimo offense usually doesn't have to travel too far to score. He says, I know when you said to him, are they that good? He just shook his head, yes. I, I think that summed everything up. Second and goal from the 10. In and out of the arms of Ray Elgar, the intended receiver. Third down, Mike Hildebrand covering on the play, and he did a pretty good job in staying close to Elgar. He stayed right with it, but let, let's take a look at it. I don't know if we'll get a good shot at it, but watch Elgar turn his head before he catches the football. He's got that head turned looking to run. He must catch it first. He, he may not have got there anyway. That was good defense by Hildebrand. 
So will they fake it or go for it? I suspect they'll go for this one. And Ridgeway's chip shot is good, so Saskatchewan draw first blood here at Taylor Field. They need the Eskimos 3-0. Stay with us. I know it's late. Close on a Dave Ridgeway field goal, a little chip shot for Ridgeway. Another game that we'll be keeping a close eye on. Hamilton on top of the Ottawa Rough Riders, 24 to 14. The Rough Riders hoping they can make it two in a row. Al Bruno and the Ticats had another idea. Well, you know, no one wants to be the team to lose first. They lost to Ottawa first last week. They had to make a amends for that at home, especially at home. You don't want to get beat twice in a row by the same team. First down. 11-08 to play, opening quarter. Saskatchewan leading the Eskimos 3-0. The Eskimos have the ball, first and 10, from their own 35. Tracy Hanna, quarterback. Takes the pitch to Taylor, under pressure. A sack for the Rough Riders. James Curry. Number 12 for Curry. He got great penetration in a hurry. Coming from the left side of the screen, they pull the guard, number 57. Curry comes right in behind him, and Ham has no chance. That little bit of a play-action fake where he faked that toss, held him long enough to allow Curry to get to him. That's a good defensive play. Eddie Lowe had a great game last week in Toronto. I thought he was as good as anybody on the field. Cedric Moses, they got to go after him, and Jurison is now healthy for the first time all year. Second and 20. Blake Marshall. Up to the 30-yard line, well short of the yardage needed for the first down. You know, they got away with it the first time. Saskatchewan got down there with the wind at their back. They had to settle for a field goal. Jerry Curry got off a great punt against the wind. Now he's got to do it again because when you have the wind at your back, keep them at three points. Don't give them seven. Dark is indeed kicking into the wind. As we mentioned, it's always a factor, nine times out of ten here at Taylor Field. Coming in from the north at 25 kilometers per hour. End over end. Gets a good bounce. Albert Brown. And he's tripped up with the midfield strike. So once again, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will have a good field position when the offense takes over. The standings in the Eastern Division. Winnipeg with that big overtime victory over the BC Lions last night off top, but Hamilton can change that with a victory over the Ottawa Rough Riders this afternoon. Here in the West, the Edmonton Eskimos running away with things in the West with that 9-1 and one record. Saskatchewan would dearly love two points out of this one to move into a tie with Calgary. Austin puts it up. Intended for Jones incomplete. The Eskimo defenders, when they're going man-to-man -man coverage, they get right in the receiver's face. And they were all over the Saskatchewan receivers that time. You saw the ball go out to Milson Jones, just Braswell number 44, right with him all the way to the sideline. Austin had nowhere to throw the ball. Second and 10 from the 54-yard line of the Edmonton Eskimos. Shotgun again for Austin. Flags down. Austin airs one out. Looking for Elgar incomplete. He got the line covered that he wanted one on one, but they're going to get Saskatchewan for illegal procedure, and I believe it's going to be Elgar. He has that that's been a tendency of his or a trait, whatever you want to say, but he jumped it again. He was across the line of scrimmage. Here's the call. Referee Dave Ewell. Illegal procedure. Saskatchewan number 81 is declined. Third down. Our game for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. It's the first game since training camp. They'd have, have had everybody in their locker room able to play and not have had a bunch uh, sitting out injured. But we give you Dave Albright, who's got a turf toe, a bad knee, a Charlie horse, and a broken hand. Aside from that, he is fine, and he is still the CFL's leading tackle. Good punt from Baker with the win, but look out! Tony Hunter forced out of bounds. You're watching Foster CFL on CBC. Well, Joe Ferragelli got to be concerned right now. Move that football out of there against the wind. Need some time off the clock. John Gregory got to be a little bit disappointed he didn't come away with more points when you're down in there, two possessions in a row, and only come out with three. Sometimes come back to haunt you. First and 10 Eskimos from their own 28-yard line. They trail 3-0. First quarter action. Ham puts it up, and it's complete to Keith Wright.
right forced out of bounds at the 42 yard line. Nice throw to the right. They get, get a little play action from him to get outside. We talked about Taylor being a ball carrier. What's this? Got James Curry coming. That's what you have to do. The size difference is pretty big. Get him down low, you don't get hurt. The wind not affecting Tracy Ham on that throw. Taylor. Across the 45, gets to the 46. Bobby Juris in there to make the tackle for the right. Well, they're going to run Taylor. No doubt about it. Keep running him because they want him to break it. The Saskatchewan's given up a lot of points defensively. They figure they can find some holes up there. In a fourth, second and 767 yards rushing coming into this game. Second and five for the Eskimos from the 46. Ham intending for Craig Ellis. Ellis left his feet, but couldn't get to the ball. They got the pressure on him. He just stepped right up. Nice job. Step up, but then he threw it too far out. Tried to get that ball to Ellis, but Tom Richards, the other slot back, as he comes downfield, watch Richie Hall. Takes on Richards. <laughs> you know, the size differential, Richie Hall, 5'6", 160 pounds. That's a good job. Take the momentum away, but stay on your feet. Again, Torrick kicking into the wind. Low snap, handle well. And not a bad punt. Richie Hall has trouble. Forced back, but still on his feet. Brought down at the 33 yard line. Don't forget, we've got hockey tomorrow. All stations across the network will be carrying it at 7 o'clock local time. The Flames playing game number three of their first for the Soviet Union. This time they take on the Wings of the Soviet in Moscow. Don Whitman, Harry Neal over there, along with Ron McLean. And I'll be hosting from our Hockey Men Candle Control Studios in Vancouver. First and ten for the Riders from their own 34. Nelson Jones. Off the right side. Well, they got to try to run the football. It's going to be very difficult. You know, when you look at the Eskimo defense, 3.8 yards a carry on the run. That is not the run. Here's what you face. Uh, you see the two linebackers. Bass fills the hole, forces them in. You see Braswell, the outside linebacker. They both get to the ball in a hurry. Austin in the shotgun. To a wide open Jeff Fairholm. Look out! One of the things today we talked about, Fairholm had to have a big game. John Gregory tells us they're going to put three receivers out there and let Jeff Fairholm go to work. The Eskimos this time didn't play man-to-man. -man. They went to the zone. He's wide open when he caught the football, and then he just turned on the Jets. And as we were told before, people don't realize how fast he is until you try to catch him. 73 yards for Fairholm for the touchdown. The point after is good, but there are flags down, so we'll wait to get the call from referee Dave Yule. Better take. 73 yards, Offside, Edmonton. Single point is good. Five yards will be applied on the kickoff. Well, Jeff Fairholm showed you that he knows what to do when he gets it. From the end zone, looks to his right. Watch the area. Watch how wide open Fairholm is. Boy, he's got a lot of room. When you miss the tackle, as Hildebrand does, it's all over. He's got people with great speed chasing him. Andre Francis, who has good speed, can't catch him. Easy romp, 73 yards for Fairholm. Ninth touchdown of the season. Austin has to be pleased. Comes in. That's 10 points on the board for him. Got to be very happy with that. Still six minutes left. Try to get all you can. Three plays, eat up 76 yards. That, that gets you points in a hurry when it doesn't take any longer than that. 
And the sixth touchdown pass of the season for the quarterback, Kent Austin. And that could be a very valuable combination for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders this afternoon. And this is exactly what the Riders wanted to do against this Eskimo defense. They wanted to strike early if they could. And what helped them a lot, think back, the opening kickoff went off Keith Wright, gave him bad field position to start with, and Saskatchewan has had the ball in Edmonton's area most of the day. Yeah, they've also had the wind, and they're using the wind now. This is right at the 20. And Wright is brought down at the 25 by Chino Alpati. See, that's still good coverage by the Saskatchewan special teams. He only got about 18 yards on that return, so they're getting down the field in a hurry. So they're going to bring it back and do it again. <laughs> An exercise in futility. Dave Ridgeway will get a chance to work out that big right leg for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders as they move the kicking tee back to the 35-yard line. Saskatchewan on the kick. Let's see Ridgeway just try to really put the foot in this. Get it up high and see what that wind would do with it. He's got a strong leg. And he can, I think he could kick it from that 35 and he could reach the goal line, I believe. The Edmonton receiver is getting set now at the 15-yard line. Keith Wright has been the main recipient of the Ridgeway kicks to Ridgeway's right. It'll be interesting to see if he goes again to the right side and again tries to work on right. This time he elects to go the left side. Tony Hunter. Hunter at the 20. 30. Fumble! But I believe the Eskimos pull it down. Danny Bass was there when the ball was popped into the air, and Bass, with his quickness, was able to pull it in. He looked like a receiver going after that ball when it popped in the air. He laid out, pulled it in, and saved another turnover. Dan Rasherwich, a linebacker, good special teams player. See what he does. He's in position. Oh! He liked to held on to that one. I know you don't expect that ball to come at you like that, but bounced off the shoulder pad, allowed Bass to reach out and grab it. They spot the ball at the 33-yard line of the Eskimos, where Edmonton are now first and 10. Intended for Hunter, but it was high, and Hunter unable to control it. 27-21 now for the Tiger Cats of the Ottawa Rough Riders. Mentioned how important this game is for both teams. Certainly for Hamilton in the race for first place. I think at the, the half, CFL's Eastern Division. At the halfway point, you wouldn't give an Ottawa a chance, but right now, they win today. They could put some pressure on Toronto. Second and ten. And with lots of time on loads, he's going long, intending for Craig Ellis. Ellis just about a step and a half behind that throw. Well, he threw to the right person. He looked to the outside. That holds Albert Brown. He goes one on one to Ellis, but you know, when you throw against the wind, you put a little more on it, and he threw it well, and it just carried. I know as a coach, you always try to tell your quarterback, don't alter your throwing style for the wind when you're throwing into the wind. Just throw normally. But it's very difficult to do. Psychologically, you feel you have to throw a lot harder than you normally would. That's right. You don't really have to. If you have the proper throwing technique, the ball will go. As long as you get the spiral, and that time Ham got it, and so the wind didn't bother it a bit. A good high punt into the wind from Dart. Richie Hall. Flag is down as Hall battles his way up to the 48-yard line. We'll be back to find out what that penalty is all about right after this. Welcome back to Taylor Field in Regina. You're watching the CFL on CBC. Saskatchewan in front of the Eskimos by a score of 10 to nothing, and that has to be a concern to Joe Farragelli at this point in the game. Right now, he's got to be hoping for that defense to cause a turnover. There's still five and a half minutes left, opening quarter. They have a 10 nothing lead. You know, if they can continue to put points, and look where they're starting inside the Edmonton 50-yard line again. That's all you can ask for. So Farragelli needs that defense right now. The penalty on that play was no yards. So it'll be first and 10 for the Riders from the 51-yard line of the Eskimos. Again, Austin in the shotgun, gives to McClay. 
Good hole for McCray. Pulls his way down to about the 42-yard line. Runs into Jeff Braswell and Danny Bass. You see three receivers. If they hurt him for a touchdown, he put three receivers to the right. They go to the shotgun. You expect a pass. But as Coach Gregory said, we can run all our counters, our handoffs, everything out of it. Showed a good example right here where Tim McCray gets the carry back to the weak side of the defense. Picks up good yards. Second down, less than one. Need uh, less than a yard for the first down. We're down to the timekeeper's area, Tom Bogus. Will this be a passing play? No, Ken Austin deciding that no sense in gambling at this stage in the game on the quarterback sleeve for the first down. I kind of thought they might throw. You know, they were under a yard, half a yard, the wind at your back. You know, everything's favorite, but I think when they use their trick play as a fake punt right away, now they're going to play straight for a while. I know they got some more. The ball's at the 40. Anniversary. Congratulations. First and 10 riders, they lead 10 0. Austin to pass. Over the middle to Elgar. Elgar down to the 25. Larry Ruck brings him down. Send 32 Milton Jones in the flat and bring Elgar underneath. And what happened when Danny Bass was going, he sees Elgar and he tried to stop and he fell down and Elgar's wide open. Watch him. All right, there goes Wilson. Now, coming across underneath, you'll see Danny Bass laying on the ground right here. He wasn't able to be in the middle linebacker position, and as a result, big catch in the first down. Austin out of the shotgun. First and 10 from the 25. Gives to McRae. Scott, but not Scott Cole. He gets to the 25, which was the original All line of scrimmage again. Danny Bass there to make the tackle. John Mander, good Bass. penetration in the backfield. Looked like he was going to make the hit, and all of a sudden, McRae is up and okay. going again, and Bass had to be there to make the tackle. They're going to run some bootleg action off this, too. We're going to see Austin fake that in a while, try to get Danny Bass to do what he did there. Run the pursue the D, the play, and go the other way. And Danny Bass will be Scott Oak's guest at halftime on the sideline. Second and ten. From the shotgun. Austin puts it over the middle. That's got to be interfered. Narcisse was interfered with by Stacy Blair. No question about that. Family. Fourth pass interfered. Edmonton number five. First down. See, that's one of the times where the shotgun might help. They brought Mike Hildebrand up on the outside to have a safety blitz. That means there's no help in the middle. That's right where they try to go. First down, so Stanley Blair has a hold of him, and he trips and falls. Now, Blair's a little bit upset, but I don't really see how. I think it's a pretty good call. First and goal to go right is from the six. Lots of time. Touchdown! for the new receiver, is it? First catch and a touchdown. Gene Taylor, 6'2", 185 pounds, and the thing that Coach Gregory likes him, about him, Andre Francis is 5'9", he's 6'2". He says, we'll play a little basketball. We'll throw him high and let him go and get it. Bridgeway just about hits the scoreboard here at Taylor Field with the point after to make it 17 to nothing. Rough right. And I think you would have to consider the margin of the score to be a major surprise. Now you do. Now you're getting a little bit. 17 is a lot. Watch him. Austin does a good job. He looks to his right, fakes now. He turns around. He's got one on one. Mismatch, 5 9 6 2. Throws it right at him. Good touchdown, bro. Gets it in there. 88 with his first catch. He said he is hoping they come up and play bump coverage on him. He said, I'm too big for them to knock around. Austin has to be pleased. That's a great start. You know, you like to give up a few points when, you're, when you've when you got the wind at your back. If you're the defense, you know you're going to give up something. We're getting to that area now where it's too many. 17 is a lot. Second touchdown pass of the game for Kent Austin, his seventh of the year, but that was all set up by a costly interference call against Stanley Blair. Right. At the 15, 20. Good speed to carry him up to the 35-yard line and give the Eskimos pretty good field position. Rob Bresciani was there to bring him back. Rob Bresciani, the Johnny kid, played University of Saskatchewan, played with a reserve man on special teams. When you're back up, back, linebacker, whatever, you've got to work the teams. That's what he does well. 
And what about pressure on this young man to get something going in terms of offense for the Eskimos? They trail 17-0, 2.28 remaining to play in the opening quarter here at Taylor Field. Taylor. Good run by Reggie Taylor. There you see just how effective that runner can be when he's allowed to pick his hole and pick his spot the way he was that time. And he was running with his eyes because he went in there really cut back against the flow, picks up the first down. What Tracy Han has to do, what he can do the best right now for the Eskimos is use the rest of the clock. Use his first quarter. Another TD for the Ticats. Now lead the Ottawa Rough Riders 34-21. Ham to put it up over the head of right field. Tried to find right, right in around about four or five jerseys. Eddie Lowe was there, Richie Hall was there in a zone. Had to bring right back to the football and as a result, the ball sale. Looks to me as if Ham may be trying to force the football a, a little bit. When you start throwing high over your receivers like that, that's usually what you're doing. Now right now, so he's got to, I say, he's got to get relaxed. Got to get a little bit relaxed now. Move the football. If you don't, you'll start doing just what you're saying, forcing the ball. Second and ten, a good pass and a good reception by Craig Ellis, who went very high in the air to pull that one down against Cedric Moses. Well, Cedric Moses is the rookie back there. Craig Ellis, that's his 51st catch. And again, watch the ball. It's high. And Tracy Hamp cannot step and throw the ball. It's up high. Ellis just went and got a good reception. But a first down keeps that ball on the, in the hands of the Eskimos for another minute. They'd love to kill the first quarter. The ball's at the 48-yard line of the Riders. Ham, quick pass to the left side to Tony Hunter. And Hunter is blocked at the 35-yard line by Steve Crane. Now uh, Ham will get a little bit more confidence. Now, you know, as he stepped back to that a little more authority to the outside receiver and threw it right on the money. Another first down for the Eskimos as they keep this drive alive. 35 seconds and the clock is running, remaining in the opening quarter. Eskimos trail 17-0. And no time this time. Fumble, but the Eskimos recover. Vince Goldsmith doing the job for the Riders that time, a job that had to be done defensively. Yeah, you got to slow him down a little bit. Gary Lewis, 79, gets it in the backfield, and then Tracy Ham steps inside of Lewis, and who's waiting on him? Right where he should be. They want Goldsmith and Jerson to only go upfield about six yards to prevent Tracy Ham from doing what he tried to do there, duck underneath and then get outside. Should be the final play of the opening quarter, second and 13 Eskimos. Ham under a little bit of pressure, gets it away, and fires it out of bounds, intended for Keith Wright, but I don't think Wright had any intention of getting to that ball. We'll be back with the second quarter from Taylor Field right after this. You may not be allergic to your house, uh, uh, or the cat, uh, uh, or the dog. Saskatchewan Rough Riders in search of their sixth win of the season, leading the Edmonton Eskimos 17 to nothing as we get set to start the second quarter here at Taylor Field. Garrett, who has been good on 9 of 18 field goals from this distance, will attempt to make it 10 of 19. 47 yards. It's wide. And Albert Brown does a little running around in the end zone. We kind of figured he would give up the single point. He does it the hard way after a little dance. Well, they needed that field goal just to get started, get three points on there early. They come away with one. You know, we said the defensive ends for Saskatchewan are going to come up and stop at six yards. That means you've got to get to the quarterback on the inside. Reggie Taylor comes over. Look at Gary Lewis. Tries to jump over him. I know he's only 5'6". That's a long way to go up in the air, but the big thing it does is force Ham to pull the ball down and try to run. Lewis to try the high jump in Barcelona. First and 10 for the Riders from their own 39-yard line. Austin going against the wind for the first time in the game. Just dumps it off to Milton Jones. Jones 
went down but managed to get up and then recovers well enough to come close to the first down before he's stopped by Mike Hildebrand. 28 to 46. Yeah, tell the story, doesn't it? One one. yard rushing. That's a little bit surprising. Turnovers. But the main thing Edmonton do is turn it over. They may not have great field position. But right now, if you have to keep this ball against the wind and march it down and score, they'll put them in deep trouble. Riders need a yard to keep the drive alive, and Austin goes up and over the top for that yard. All right. It is first down. Eddie Lowe being worked on on the right bench. He had an outstanding game last week. I thought it was really good. Out there. Uh, he was kicking everywhere. Every time Finley tried to carry the ball on the counter, Lowe was there to hit him. He put some good hits on him, which he's been doing for a few years. First and ten riders from the own 50. Get to McRae. McRae does his job, picks up his average. Just over six yards per carry. You get a 17 up to lead, get things going your way. Everybody feels the effect. All Dag and Kenmore on the left side. They open the hole. And McCray, who's a north-south runner, which means he heads straight to the goal line. That's a good start for him. Good job up front. The ball just inside the Eskimos territory at the 54-yard line. Second and four for the Riders. Oh! Austin to McCray complete first down. At the 45-yard line. That's the play John Gregory said we would probably see. They'll put those three receivers to one side of the field. And that Tim McCray goes out the back side. He has to be covered by a linebacker. He goes to the right of the picture. That puts Larry Ruck, the outside linebacker, on him. Really should be no contest. A lot of room to throw the ball. All Ruck can do is make the tackle. A good all-round afternoon for Tim McCray. Rushing the ball well, receiving well. Good fake there from Austin. Still has it. And finally tripped up at the 40-yard line by Jeff Braswell. Well, they ran that counter to McCray two or three times. This time they faked it. Little bootleg action. He just wasn't able to ever get set up to throw it. So he took off and ran. Got five yards. If you've just joined us, I'm Steve Armitage, along with Ron Lancaster in the booth. Scott Oak is down on the sidelines. You're watching the CFL on CBC. Second quarter action from Taylor Field. Riders lead 17 to 1. Second and six. Ball at the 41 from the shotgun. Austin going deep. And Narcisse almost came up with it. He was double covered. Stanley Blair was there, as was Hildebrand. That's the first time we've really seen the wind affect the football. Austin come to his left and went back to the post to Narcisse. Hildebrand tried to get there, but the ball got up high in the air. Look at it wobble. Watch Narcisse almost pulls it down. That's the way to go get the ball. And that ball's in the air. It belongs to whoever brings it down. That would have made somebody's highlight film had he been able to hang on to that one. Terry Baker, a rare appearance for the Riders this afternoon, will try to punt. Into the wind, he gets a good high spiral. And it goes out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. 11-22 remaining to play second quarter. Riders lead 17 to 1. Sie müssen uns den Bericht so schnell wie möglich senden, weil einer Outside of a little wind, a perfect afternoon for football here at Taylor Field in Regina. Certainly a perfect afternoon for the Riders on the field. They lead 17 to 1. The second quarter just nicely underway. 34-28. The Ottawa Rough Riders coming back. Ty Cats still on top in that Eastern Division battle. You know, you think of the Ottawa Rough Riders. They put the points on the board. Their problem has been stopping teams and they know that they have to score over 30 to win. Well, today they need 35, so they're making a comeback. It's not over yet down there. Tracy Ham once again, will have the wind at his back as he starts this drive for the Edmonton Eskimos, first and 10. The ball spotted at the 11-yard line. Ham just swings it out, and it's knocked down. He was intending it for Blake Marshall. But an alert read there by the Saskatchewan defender, Vince Goldsmith. He got through and got a hand on it. Oh, that's their favorite play, the swing screen into the sideline. What they do to Goldsmith is they chop him. They cut the legs out from under him, which they did. But you never stay on the ground, and he got up and almost picked it off. 
So Ham will have to do it again. Second and ten from the 11. Ham under pressure. And he fires it over the head of the intended receiver, Reggie Taylor. But it looks as if we may get a holding call on the play. He got pressure in a hurry. He was forced to scramble up inside. He tried to get out of it, then wisely throw the football away. Don't take the sack down there. You're deep enough in your own end. Holding the call against the Eskimos. Jerry Carr will attempt to get the Eskimos out of a big hole here with the wind at his back. Low snap, but handled well, and a good high punt. A long one, too. Richie Hall at the 50, bit of a hole. And Richie Hall does well to get it to the 47-yard line, runs into Stuart Hill. Don't forget Monday, September 24th, a very special program of September to remember. We visit Seoul in South Korea, site of the 1988 Summer Olympics. Bring back a flood of memories for you, including the Ben Johnson story. 8 o'clock local time in all the regions across the country. A September to remember, and indeed it was. Austin, first and ten, over the middle, complete to Elgar. Austin's pass complete. Very short, though, right inside. This time the linebackers don't fall down, and Bass is there to make the hit. The thing about Austin right now, he has six different receivers. He's mixing it around, throwing a little bit to everybody. Keep them all in the game, keep the defense confused. Just under ten minutes to play, second quarter. Saskatchewan leads 17-1. Second and five for the Riders. Austin out of the shot. And that bought Austin a little time, but he threw it low. He was looking for Austin Jeff Fairholme. I don't know if it's Greg Stuman. It might have been Stuman that got his hand. When a quarterback's throwing a ball, it doesn't take much to cause it to go off target. And when Fairholme runs his hook, you'll see him come back. He'll be open, but the ball's going to bounce. Somebody cuts the right arm, and I thought it was Greg Stuman, just as he was throwing, because Austin turned around to find him. 46 was uh, the guy he was looking at. And Jeff Fairholme, who has one of the touchdowns for Saskatchewan this afternoon, shaking his fingers there. He may have trapped his fingers as he went for the ball. Jamie Hunter, Hunter steps out of bounds at the 13-yard line. You're watching Foster's CFL on CBC. The guy in the middle is Bill Baker. <laughs> I think they're talking over league business. They're making some major decisions with the flame. <laughs> Maybe the flame is the deep throat of the CFL or something. Maybe Baker consults with the flame. Well, right now he is. I think he is. We're going to have to check Baker out. Look at it. He's very serious. The flame's telling him something. Maybe he wants to change from propane to ethyl or something. That's it. Just checking with the regular to high it's all right. 17-1, Riders lead, but the Eskimos have the ball, first and 10 from the 14. That fake bought Tracy Ham a little bit of time, but the Riders' defense weren't buying it, especially Bobby Jericho. We talked about Bobby Jerson today as one of the defensive keys. We said that he's healthy now. He's over those leg injuries that he's had. He has to get upfield to try to contain him. He forces a fumble. This is a big, big break for Saskatchewan. Get a good look at it, too, because it's going to be coming. Here he comes. So rolling away. The man is going to make the play, number 71, Jerson. There he is. The ball disappears. And number 70, Goldsmith, looks like he's got it. Put that one in the category of huge turnovers, and Bobby Jurison made it happen for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. So now it's first and goal to go for the Riders from the four-yard line. They lead 17 to one. Nine minutes to play, second quarter. Jones. the 
offensive line, they do a great job, but really, Milton Jones gets this touchdown on his own once he turns back to the inside. And the flag is thrown on the field. I believe it's going to be objectionable conduct against somebody because of the way the ball was spiked on the field. But we'll see in a minute that it'll take place on the kickoff. But that was a great run by Jones. He got outside and had to turn in, and then he just bounced off of about three people. Well, unfortunately, the referee's mic is not working, so we'll have to pick up the call from the hand signals. Objection. That is the call from referee The touchdown is still good. Look at this one, right here. This now is they a little split. bit of razzle dazzle, isn't it? That's what they did on that fake field goal. That's the way they lined up. They lined up outside, snapped it to McCray. But I don't think there was any doubt that Ridgeway was going to put it through for the extra point to make it 24 to 1 for the Rough Riders. You know, you always think you can come back when you get the win, but when you turn it over and give up an easy six, and Milton Jones does the work on this one. All right, watch Milton Jones. Watch the number of people. Brian Elephant goes up through the hole. Now, look, one, two, three, four, five people hit him, and he still falls into the end zone. That's an outstanding job of running. Tim McCray makes the block, and a good block on Wilson. There's Danny Fast, very sure-handed tackler, and Jones fights through there. Jackson cannot bring him down. And that penalty will mean that the kickoff now will come from the 25-yard line. So Dave Bridgeway will have his work cut out for him because he's kicking into the wind. This should result in excellent field position for the Edmonton Eskimos. Well, that's a, that's a tough one. You know, that objectionable conduct, not a great penalty to take at the best of times. But when you're kicking off into the wind, now it's from the 25-yard line. Spiking the ball after the touchdown. Right. And Wright tripped up at the midfield stripe. The Eskimos will have the ball at the 53-yard line. Nelson Jones spiked the ball after the touchdown. It is ruled objectionable conduct. I, I don't think it's the spike that got him. I think he spiked it at a player. And I think the referees are going to get a little tough on that. And I think it's good. I don't I don't see anything wrong with spiking it in the end zone. But don't spike it at the feet of a player. I think you're trying to embarrass him in. You don't need it. Not important, but it cost him 10 yards. But Edmonton's got good field position and needs to do something offensively. First and 10 Eskimos run the 52. Taylor. And he's brought down at the 44 yard line. Number seven, Richie Hall in there to make the stop for the Riders. It'll be interesting now to see if Ham can muster the offensive troops of the Edmonton Eskimos and get something going. The biggest thing Tracy Ham can do right now is don't try to get it all at once. He has to prove to the offensive unit and himself that they can move this football methodically downfield and score. That's the most important thing he can do in the next couple of minutes. They need two yards for the first down. They give to Blake Marshall. Blake Marshall, Marshall should have it. Now let's go down to Scott Oak. Well, Steve Danny Bass is the heart and soul of the defense that many say is the best in the CFL, but one that's taking a beating today. He'll be our guest and inside the CFL at halftime. International football came to Regina last night. It had nothing to do with American players and the Rough Riders roster. This game had a European flavor, the uh, first Euro Can Bowl, matching the Regina Rams, the Cologne Red Barons, and we'll have a report on the Euro Can Bowl on inside the CFL at halftime. Ron, you saw a bit of that game last night. You enjoyed it. That was kind of fun for a while. The Rams just had too much talent. Tracy Ham, complete on the sidelines to Tom Richards. Good catch by Richards. Well thrown football by Ham. Took a heck of a shot just to see through the football from behind. He got up a little slow, but he's up moving around okay. Richards again comes back to the sidelines, helped the quarterback. A little bit of a bootleg fake. Here he comes. Now he's on the run. Here comes Bobby Jerson from behind. Not bad. You know, he hit him, but he didn't try to really punish him. He got his hands on him and then let him go. They're going to measure this one. They're moving out the yard sticks. Yeah, that junior football game last night was 
It was just one of those things. They just didn't have the talent. Regina Rams a pretty powerful junior organization anyway, and it, you could just see it coming. You know, it just kept getting worse and worse. It ended up something like 52 to seven or something, but it was a heck of a an experience, I think, from what I hear of the players. Cologne only had two coaches, and one of them was a quarterback. He was the quarterback, the head coach, the punter, and he made some great tackles. He did it all. They need a yard for the first down. Well, they get it from Tracy Ham. Not taking any chances, keeps the ball himself. And the Eskimos keep the drive alive. They need that against the suddenly red hot Saskatchewan Rough Riders here at Taylor Field. The Riders lead 24 to 1, 634 to play in the opening half. Yeah, we say three times. The offense is better the longer it's on the field. Half. Tracy Ham, as we just said a minute ago, needs to put this ball in the end zone. High scoring game in the East. And that's over the head of Tony Hunter. Hunter would have needed a step ladder to get that. Anthony Hunter incomplete. Danny Bass had an outstanding season. He told me down in Toronto when they were getting ready to play. Playing in the defense by Ron Matthews. He won't lead the league in tackles this year. He says that it'll be a lot more fun to play because he won't always be in the middle. And so far, he's got some pretty good statistics. He's got four sacks. He's recovered six fumbles now. He's got three interceptions, and he's their leading tackler. That's not a bad work so far for him. Second and ten. Long throw, and it's complete to Hunter on the left sideline. Hunter forced out of bounds at the 15. That'll give the Eskimos the first down. Albert Brown was covering on the play, but it was really no contest on an excellent long throw to that left sideline from Tracy Ham. A long throw, Steve. You can tell how much room Tony Hunter had. Now watch how long this ball is in the air. He's throwing from one hash mark. That's about 45 yards over there, and Albert Brown can't get there. He had a big cushion, which means he was too far off the receiver. So it's first and 10 Eskimos. The ball spotted at the 15-yard line. Riders lead 24-1. Ham pumps once, puts it up, touchdown! Keith Wright. Eskimos. And Wright spikes the ball, but I don't believe he spiked it at any player in particular. That's right, you can spike the football. Don't spike it at the feet. He just went back there on the Saskatchewan helmet and spiked the football. That particular throw by Tracy Hand, he had to let it go. He was under some tremendous pressure. He threw the ball to the outside, and the Keith Wright turned around right on a number. Well executed. The fans here at Taylor Field are obviously upset with what Wright did after the touchdown. Burke <laughs> with the point after, and it's good. So the Edmonton Eskimos offense comes to life. It is now 24-8 by 34 to go. Welcome back to Regina and Taylor Field, where the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are leading the Eskimos 24-8, 5-34 remaining to play in the second quarter. Marco Sinkar with a booming kickoff. Gene Taylor and Taylor up to the 35-yard line. Runs into Greg Stuman. Otherwise, he was long gone. Pretty good drive for Tracy Ham. That's what he needed to do. Get it down. Watch him throw this football. You'll see the pressure coming right there at Goldsmith. Now, watch where it is. Just as Wright turns around, the ball lands on the numbers. A little bit of luck involved in that, but hey, you, that's why you practice. That ball's in the air. There it is. Skipper cannot recover. That's a good pattern by Wright. We said he had some pressure. Watch Vince Goldsmith. He has to get rid of it. He throw it and duck. And that's what he did. He still got hit. He paid the price. And the Eskimos are glad he did. No Taylor's shaken up on that return. He returned at 30 yards to get the Saskatchewan Rough Riders pretty good field position. First and 10 from the 34. Jones. 
and Jones pulled his way up about the 38-39 yard line before Danny Bass manages to haul him down. While they run that draw play, just go back and give it to Milson Jones. He tries to get outside with the football. Larry Ruck, 47, comes up, turns it back into that man, Danny Bass. Watch him. Bass is reading the fullback. He doesn't go anywhere. Now he's got the ball. Find him. Ruck turns him in. Bass makes the tackle. A pitch to McRae, right side. McRae just puts his head down. Oh, here, 40 yard line. He gets up to about the 42. We've got 32 points on the scoreboard here at Taylor Field. Look how many points they've got in Hamilton. I'll tell you, they're racking them up. That's it was a 24-14 when we got our score. It's changed a little bit since then, had it? 42-28, Ticats on top. Third and two, the Riders aren't taking any chances. Baker comes on to punt. Another high spiral into the wind. Ellis tripped up short of the 40-yard line. Yeah, they took the ball, marched it down the field last time and scored. The defense come out and did their job. Two plays and out. And get it to the offense, Tracy Ham. Right now, I'd like to get another drive started that would end up in the end zone. Ham will tell you, it just took me a little time to get warmed up, that's all. It does sometimes. It really does, especially when you start out early in that first quarter with bad field position. From the 38, that's the ball's first and 10. Pass complete. This is Ellis. Good run by Ellis after he made the catch. Down across the 35. Cedric Moses there to bring him down. Throwback action. We said Craig Ellis would be one of the keys and that Moses would be a defensive key. Sprint to your right. Stop. Look back. Throw back side. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Ellis has Moses. This is the best part of the play. Just run straight ahead until they tackle him. That's a good job. First and 10 from the 34. Again, this one complete to Taylor. And Taylor battles his way down to the 22-yard line. Now he's getting on the roll. Tracy Hamm now, if you think, when you mentioned earlier he was forcing the ball, watch him throw the ball now. He is stepping and firing. And it's on a rope. Confidence. That's Jeff all it is. High, hands high. You're watching Foster's CFL on CBC, live from Regina. It's 302 remaining to play in the second quarter here at Taylor Field on a blustery afternoon, but otherwise the weather is absolutely perfect for this time of year. It's first and 10 Eskimos. The ball is spotted at the 22-yard line. The Eskimos on a bit of a roll now with Tracy Ham after a very slow start for Ham and the Eskimos offense in that opening quarter. You know, it's right now. Tracy Ham's got him up on the line of scrimmage, waiting on the official to blow in play. The reason for it, he's got three minutes with the wind at his back. What he wants to do is score, get that football back, and try to get some more points by the end of the half. A pretty good move by the Eskimos. The clock is running under three minutes now. And with time. And I believe just as he unloaded his arm may have been struck by Vince Goldsmith, who got into that backfield. Well, Vince Goldsmith got upfield and then ran over Blake Dermott, number 50, and knocked him right into Tracy Ham. Looks like he's going to have time to throw. He gets set now, coming from the right side. Watch Goldsmith. Gets inside of him, reaches out with that hand, and as you say, he caused the ball to go into the ground. So it's now second and 10, Eskimos from the 22. Cam with a deeper drop, gets the pass away, and it's incomplete over the head of Tom Richards. Like a little bit disappointed, which he should be. He wanted to get that ball in the end zone. They bring him a half-back blitz, which put him one-on-one -on -one coverage, and he overthrew Tom Richards. So I think they have to get three on the board right now. Going back to the objectionable conduct call a little while ago, we blamed Nelson Jones for spiking the ball. It was not Nelson Jones, it was Tim McCray. Well, whoever, but the explanation given, he spiked it at the player. I think it's a good call. We'll apologize to Bill. The goal is good. 
And Carrick's field goal is good, so the Eskimos do manage to pick up three points from this drive. They make it 24-11 with 2.43 to play in the second quarter. Saskatchewan's going to take the football. They're not going to allow the Eskimos to kick off. You remember, Sinkar kicked that thing down to about the three. The Eskimos would love nothing better than to two and out and give that offense time to score with the wind at their back just before halftime. Well, once again, Tracy again Austin will have to work with the wind in his face. Get some time. Complete to Narcy. That is complete. Nice pattern. He took off like he was going to go deep. Donald Stanley Blair turned Number the eight. hips to go deep, and Narcisse ran a hook right in front of him. Well run. Watch his ball thrown. You see Stanley Blair coming from behind. Get that separation. Get away from the defensive back. Makes the catch. Now Blair has to come back and get him. But he turned his hip. That's what Narcisse wanted him to do. First and 10 riders from the 47. The pitch to Jones. Jones cuts it upfield. Crosses the midfield strike. Gets ball into Eskimo territory. For Vic Stevenson. And Brian Gillibrand did a heck of a job of opening the way for Milson Jones to turn up inside. Austin's play selection this afternoon has been very intelligent. He's using everybody. Moving the ball around, can't key on one person. Use six different receivers. McCray, Jones, both carrying the football. He's even run once. Second and two. Look to Jones. Milson Jones carrying And depending on where they mark it, Jones will be very close to picking up the first down. 2.04 to play till halftime. And they do indeed have the first down. Good drive by the Saskatchewan Upriders down to 2.04. Hamilton still up. 35 to the That's unusual. We've had the same score twice in a row. We haven't had that so far. Austin out of the shotgun, and this time it backfires. Danny Bass in on top of the Rough Rider quarterback, and he drops him at the 46-yard line. I don't, I don't think we can talk enough about the play of Danny Bass this year. Watch him from the middle linebacker position. Cuts right inside of Aldag and Stevenson. Gets his hands on him, and it's over. Big loss for Saskatchewan. Puts it second and long. Bass has had an outstanding season. And don't forget, Danny Bass will be Scott Oates' live guest on Inside the CFL at halftime. Second and 20 now for the right. McCray, the ball carrier. McCray back his way down to the 52-yard line. And that will bring on Mr. Baker. A punting situation, third and 10. And again, Baker punting into the wind. See Baker standing there, they're watching the time clip off. Now they're down to about five seconds, they'll snap the ball. Low spiral. Tony Hunter. And Hunter, lucky to get to that ball because Baker was very, very close to it. Flags go down. But I think Baker, being the punter, was the closest to the ball at the time the flags went down. Here's the call. No yards, bounce back rule, five yard penalty. First down. Bounce back rule. When the wind is blowing like that and that ball bounces back toward the kicking team and you get caught inside while making an attempt to get out of that five yard area, it's only five yards. That's a pretty good rule. An excellent rule and one that uh, should have been put in many, many years ago. Always a lot of controversy over no yards. It sure did. It caused, over the years, I can think of numerous times, that team's trying, like Glenn Suda was trying to get out of there. Paul just kept coming with him. First and 10 Eskimos from their own 38-yard line. They trail 24-11. All sorts of flags go down in the backfield at the line of scrimmage. Fair to say the riders were coming. I, I think it's fair to say. Ooh, that surprised me. 
That really surprises me. I thought when the quarterback came out from behind center without the football, I thought they'd call him for illegal procedure. How they're going to talk about evidence playing here. Well, let's see. If the ball has a move. You see the offensive line move. The left guard raised up and traced Illegal him procedure out. on the quarterback, number eight, Edmonton. First down repeated. Good call. I mean, that's nice to see him change it. I mean, we see the replay. The guard moved. And the quarterback from John Gregory to move the ball back five yards. That's a good call, though. First and 15, that's the most. Ham, oh, no, no, no. with a little bit of time, but nobody's open. Now he scrambles. Finally gets rid of it complete on the left sideline to Tony Hunter. That's a good job by Tracy Ham. He wanted to throw backside again. He wanted to throw that pattern to Ellis, but he was well covered. And when he scrambled, Hunter came back to the football. Receivers really help quarterbacks when they come back and find an open area. 55 seconds remain until halftime. This time, Ham unable to elude the pressure. James Curry leading the rush for the Rough Riders. Good pressure. Curry got upfield, Goldsmith upfield, and Gary Lewis gets the sack. That is a good job. Leading sack team in the league coming in. Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Lewis gets number eight. Number one. see Gary Lewis. Second and 15. Pass, Taylor, and Taylor slipped. He had to get to the 50-yard line for the first down. Albert Brown was covering on the play. So had Taylor not slipped, Brown was there to make the tackle anyway. I like I like this. 38 seconds left, third down eight. They're going after it at midfield. That's a lot of confidence in the defense. Why not? Ham's got a ton of time. But not enough. Vince Goldsmith with the sack. At the coverage sack. That is a great job by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders secondary. And you said it. He had a lot of time to throw the ball. You don't have all day. Sooner or later, somebody will get you. And they sure did. Vince Goldsmith. We saw Tracy Ham actually just stand there. Watch how much time he has to throw this football. You usually get about three seconds. He's got about a week and a half and still found nobody open. Vince Goldsmith gets it and it's a great field position for the Green. Well, they got 28 seconds to do something with it. First and 10 from the 50. Shotgun formation again. And it's complete. Over the middle of Jeff Fairholm. Saw who, Bass makes a tackle. He saw who delivered the hit. He dropped back in that hook zone, and when that ball was thrown, he let Fairholm know that when you come in here, I'll be waiting. Clock is running. Less than 20 seconds now. Austin puts it up to pick the Jones. You don't bring Jones down with one hand. You drag him down, and that's what he did. He dragged the tackle to Jeff Braswell about five yards. He got the step on Braswell, and he got turned up field. Very fortunate that Braswell got that arm on him to bring him down. Ken Austin asked Gregory if he wanted a timeout. Gregory said no. Then Gregory changed his mind, and he's getting the timeout. Timeout, Saskatchewan. Well, he's got 13 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. There was 14. There's one second difference. I don't know if they'll put it back up there or not, but there were 14 seconds on it. Ken Austin is, a, is a, Jones went down. He signaled to Gregory to time out, and he got waved off. And then on second thought, Gregory decided to go ahead and call timeout. All right, coach, what do you do? You got 13 seconds on the scoreboard. You just keep it on the ground, move it into position. They've now put that extra second back up. 14 seconds. Do you move it into position for a Ridgeway field goal attempt, or do you go for the major? I, I think we're going to go. Let's go for it. Let's don't mess around. You know, you got the chance thing. You're cooking right now. Austin's hot. Let's go try to score. Let's try to get it to the end zone. 14 seconds time for three plays. First and 10. The ball's at the 28. McCray busts up the middle. Well, I guess I was wrong. Dead wrong. Now 11 seconds showing. 11 seconds. I still will take another shot at the end zone with 11 seconds. 
Well, Ridgeway is into the ball game and he'll attempt this field goal from the 32 yard line. Jeff Fairholm uh, down on one knee. Ivan Gutman's out there checking him over. Looks like he's checking his ankle, maybe twisted it as he tried to turn. Coming into this game, Ridgeway has been good on 29 of 33 attempts, 80%. He's one for one this afternoon. I think you have to be impressed with his fair home. He is top. He's not the biggest guy, but he goes into the middle, and he goes after it. See, right now, they're going to play another shot. I get it called in a hurry, because that clock's going to start as soon as the referee walks away from the ball. Get the play called, get out of the huddle. Don't waste too much time. See, too late. Hurry, hurry. Rock is hurry. running. Eight seconds. Shotgun formation. What's he going to do with it? He goes down to stop the clock with three seconds. That's a pretty good move. And he wasted the time. I think they thought the clock wouldn't start till the snap, but it doesn't on an injury. It's through that referee walked away. They had to be up at the line, ready to say hot when that ball was, when that referee walked away. That's a pretty smart thing. Good job of thinking by Ken Austin. Now Edmonton's going to play the game. They're going to put a little pressure on Ridgeway and say, hey, we'll give you some time to think about it. John, uh, Joe Ferragalli, look at his notes. He says, why did I call time? Let's talk about this. Here. You know, <laughs> two seconds. All you tell that guy with two seconds, get it out of the end zone. He's got Mark Rosin, Carr, Jerry Carrick. I believe they're going to kick this ball out of there. Oh, I love this part of the CFL. I think this is so it. unique, so different. Send 10, send 10, force him to kick it in a hurry. If it's off, kick it out of it. Jerry Carrick's on one side, Mark Rosin, Carr on the other. I think Corey's probably going to run for a touchdown. He's going to run it out of there. What do you think? And now the field goal attempt will come from the 35-yard line for Ridgeway. It's good. And the time runs out, so the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will head for the dressing room at halftime with a 27-11 lead. The CFL on CBC. Brought to you by Foster's Lauder. Proud to bring you the best of the CFL. And by Priority Courier. Official courier of the Canadian Football League. An entertaining first half of play here at Taylor Field in Regina that sees the hometown in front of the Eskimos 27 to 11. The statistical story in that first half. A lot closer now. The Eskimos got things rolling. Their biggest problem, they didn't finish the drives where Saskatchewan put 17 points on with the win. The, es the Eskimos weren't able to do it. Trail at the half 27 11. They're going to give the Eskimos the wind and the ball to start the third quarter. So this is the Eskimos time to put those statistics more in their favor. And it'll be interesting to see what adjustments, if any, and I'm sure they have made some adjustments, the Eskimos defense will do to try and stop Ken Austin and the Riders' offense. Yeah, they got to do something. It'll be interesting to see what Don Matthews comes up with, you know, because he doesn't like anyone moving the football, and he thinks he can shut everybody out. Keith Wright. And Wright almost has the ball stripped as he gets to the 35-yard line by John Hoffman. Good play by Hoffman. Heads up play there. Well, that's what he's there for. You know, he's that backup again. The defensive secondary guy goes in whenever an injury occurs. He's a rookie. First year in football out of the University of Saskatchewan. Downfield on that special team. It's a final now. Hamilton going over the 50-point mark. Again, this season, 52-34 over the Ottawa Rough Riders and moving into a tie for first place in the East with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. First and ten Eskimos. Ham just swings it out to Taylor. And Taylor cannot get around Bobby Jurison. Jurison got a hand on him and wouldn't let go. What a great job Jurison did, too. Again, they try to cut the legs out of the, the defensive end. In this case, Jurison. Watch him. He's not on the ground one bit. He jumped right over and he's standing out there waiting on him so Reggie Taylor can never turn upfield. That's a good job by Jurison. 6 0 4 Third quarter just underway here at Taylor Field. 27 11. Riders lead, but the Eskimos have the ball. Tracy Hand with some time. Now flushed out of the pocket. 
hand directing traffic. He's going to keep it himself. And he gets close to the first down. Richie Hall was in pursuit. He had absolutely nobody to throw the football to once he broke containment and got outside. He had to do what he did. That's just make the best of a bad situation. And he did a pretty good job of that, as he always does whenever he elects to run the ball. Watch again. The time that he has to throw the ball. What? He looks around, looks to his left, comes to his right. Nobody there. Now he gets outside of Goldsmith. There's only one receiver on this side of the field, and he's covered, so he's got to run. Watch him lunge for this first and ten marker as he goes down. Try to reach it. So they're going to measure. Ideally, when you flush him out of the pocket like that, you like to have some sort of containment. Keep him contained. He doesn't throw as well standing up, you know, right in the middle. But on the run, he's deadly. That's his game. Get outside and make things happen. And that last second lunge from him left him inches short of the first down. So I don't think there's any question that Farragelli will elect a gamble here. His club trails 27 to 11. I don't think there's any question that Ham's going to carry the football the third and inches. And Ham just takes the ball, goes to the right side, and should have the first down with about a half a yard to spare. Dave Albright, middle linebacker, he did all you can do. I mean, Tracy Ham's a very strong individual. He gets those legs moving forward. Albright jumped right on his back, but he couldn't bring him down. You know, I was looking at the statistics. 72 tackles Albright has. That is a lot of hits. 13-16 to play third quarter. First and 10 at the most on the 49. Taylor. And Taylor gets to the 52-yard line and goes no further. His legs were moving, but he wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, pretty good hold on in there. Richie Hall was one of the guys when he let's cut go, back against go. the flow. Richie Hall was up there and got in on the tackle. They had him up high. He kept the legs moving, as you say. He had nowhere to go. There's the battle of the rushers. Second down. Ham gets away. Good effort on the part of Tracy Ham. You know, we talk about athletes, and Tracy Ham's an outstanding athlete. That, you don't teach this kind of stuff. Tracy Ham steps in the pocket. Looks like he's going to be sacked. Just he gets ready to, ready to throw it, he has to pull it down. What? Now, you don't teach him to do that. He sees it, he turns, he misses it, and then he goes right upfield. The thing you like right here, two defenders, he tried to split them. That, that way you don't get the hard hit. First down from the 46, complete to Craig Ellison. Ellis pays the price. From Albert Brown, when he took that pass, Brown hit level. Ellis was arguing that he caught the football, and when he hit the ground, the fumble occurred. But Albert Brown, you could see this coming. He's on a full run, and just as the ball arrived, bang, there's the hit. And it would have been a fumble, because the ground didn't make him fumble. That ball was out. Second down. Again, Ham with time. Just unloads. He's got a man wide open. Wright. Touchdown. Second TD of the game for Keith Wright. Boy, was he open. It almost looked like Tracy Ham was going to run. They blitzed Richie Hall from the short side of the field. Tracy Ham didn't know it, but he was running away from the blitz. And when he got out there with all the room, and he turned and looked, he probably couldn't believe Wright could be that open. But when you take the man out of the middle, that means Glenn Suter isn't deep. Watch, it comes from the left side of the screen. You see number seven. The hand just steps up inside of it. Now he's got all day, and he lets it go. Keith Wright's wide open. Just all you hope then is that you don't hit the goalpost or you don't drop it. <laughs> you know, it's been done before. Too many times, probably. The point after Shark is good. So the Eskimos are on a roll. You're watching Fox News CFL on CBC. You aren't seen interrupt. I'm going to see Don. Go get him, Bob. It took the Eskimos seven plays. It covered 73 yards. It took three minutes and 12 seconds. The score is 27 to 18. Now let's go to Scott Oak. Well, Steve, on the sidelines, one of the interested observers here today, slightly more than interested, I guess we could say, is CFL President Bill Baker. Bill, I would think if this result proves anything to this point in the season, it's that there's parity in the CFL. Even the Eskimos can be beaten. That's right. It's been another great weekend. Last night's game, Winnipeg, B.C., was a fantastic game. Today is a fantastic game. 
It's a very, very competitive league. Things have sort of turned the corner since Labor Day, haven't they? This is a pretty lively corpse of the CFL. Yeah, it really is, and Labor Day was a huge turning point for the league, and now with, with the West Coast going so well, we really have a, have a great chance to get on with 1990. All right, thank you, Bill. Steve? Good to hear Bill Baker so pumped up about the CFL. <laughs> no surprise there. Gene Taylor. And Taylor crosses the 30-yard line, gets to the 32, where the Rough Riders will scrimmage first and 10. 11.43 to play third quarter. They lead 27-18, but the Eskimos are the team that's put the points on the board in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, you can't ask to come out and show some ball control right now. They may not score, but make some first down. Give your defense a chance to rest. All the motion set up to the left side. Then McCray. 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 All the motion set up to the left side. And when all those players go over there, Larry Ruck, the backside linebacker, comes right down the line of scrimmage and gets in on the tackle. He gained a couple in second eight. Pick up of two yards. Second and eight. The ball at the 34-yard line. Austin with that short drop, and he paid the price that time. He saw the blitz coming. The Eskimos were all within three yards of the line of scrimmage. All the quarterback can do is he knows the pressure's coming, but he had Fairholm one-on-one -on -one going down the middle of the field. He would have been wide open. But if you don't have a chance to throw it, you can't complete it. Terry Baker not enjoying one of his better afternoons as a putter. He's averaging just over 34. Season average of just over 41. But in fairness to Baker, he has been punting a lot into the wind. And it's not easy on a putter. Although Bob Cameron probably does it as good as anybody I've ever seen. Another four punt from Baker. Taken by Tony Hunter. Hunter looking for some room on the outside. Hunter pulled down by Sean Vander. It's a good job by Hunter. You know, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders had him pinned in. You got to keep him in there. Don't let him outside. But good field position for Tracy Hamm to get started again. The Eskimos trail 27 18, but. Ham has been the quarterback with a hot hand of late. 10-18 to play, third quarter. Eskimos start from the 47-yard line. Ham does well to elude the pressure. Gets it to Craig Ellis. Ellis finally forced out of bounds at the eight-yard line by Harry Skipper. Well, that time Tracy Ham showed the oblivious to the blitz. I mean, they were all around him. He stood right in there and laid a nice pass. Watch the pressure on Tracy Ham. A lot of green jerseys. He just steps up, throws it out there. Good catch. Craig Ellis is having an outstanding season. He shows real good running abilities. He just turned right outside Harry Skipper. Good effort from Craig Ellis. What a remarkable story he's been for the Edmonton Eskimos so far this season. 93 yards so far. Touchdown, Taylor! 42, outside linebacker Eddie Lowe has to pick up Reggie Taylor man-to-man. -man. Reggie Taylor has a running start coming at him. No contest. It's just whether Ham can get the ball there, and he had lots of time. I don't know what adjustments the Edmonton Eskimos have made against the Saskatchewan defense, but whatever it is, they have done it perfectly, absolutely perfectly. It is now a three-point difference, 27-24. Carrick will try to make it a two-point difference. As usual, the point after is good. It's now 27-25. We've got a ball game. Stay tuned. Saturday, September 23rd, Calgary at Toronto at 7.30 Eastern on the CFL on CBC. Just under 25,000 here in attendance at Taylor Field this afternoon. The Rough Riders continuing to enjoy great support from all the fans in the province of Saskatchewan. Sinkar kicking off long and high. 
Eugene Taylor. Taylor does well to get to the 25, but he fumbles, but I believe Saskatchewan have recovered. Only took him 43 seconds to get a major and move to within two points of the Riders, and this is how they did it. Well, as we say, Taylor gets low one-on-one -on, -one on a running start. He should win the race every time. It's not even close. He just tumbles into the end zone. Now we'll see him. He gets started. See him pointing? They're reading safety blitz to the other side of the field. So he's telling them, here I go. Eddie Lowe can't get out there. Right over the shoulder, stumble in. Easy. 43 seconds. You can score a lot of points. You're going to do that every time. Austin has got to get something going. He flips it out to Fairholm. Fairholm has the first down. Pretty got the call down in here. Going against the wind. Come out there and pitch that ball up in the air. Fairholm catches it on the dead run. A little bit of a fake to McCray. Now outside, flip it up. Got him chasing the quarterback. Fairholm gets outside. Picks up a first and ten. Stuart Hill has to come from behind to make the tackle. I would think it fair to say that this is an important series for the Riders. Yeah, they got to get some clock time off that clock. That's what they've got to do. Austin just dumps it off. Narcisse was coming back for it, but he just couldn't get to it. Austin was under tremendous pressure, and he just threw it into the middle, but he knew Narcisse was close, but uh, I don't think he had any hopes of Narcisse coming up with a catch. A pretty good pressure on the quarterback, Brett Williams, number 91. So he wants to throw it right now. It's not open. Here comes the defense. Brett Williams gets a good hit on him just he's throwing. Those kind hurt. When you got that arm extended forward and, and your weight going forward, and all of a sudden the 260 pounder like Williams puts you on your back. That hurts. Second and ten. Over the middle, complete. Real guard. Now Wilson really complaining to the official, saying you got to do something. Elgard is pushing as he's coming down. He gives him a shove, then runs the hook. Referee doesn't agree with him. First down. Third and inches. Short yard. He's third down in about three inches, it looks like. They're sending in the horses. Good catch there by Elgard. Full house backfield. And Austin keeps himself, pulls away across the 50 yard line to pick up the first down. That offensive line comes off on the snap count. You can't really stop the quarterback from getting a yard. Keeps the clock running. Down to seven minutes. He's got a couple first downs back to back. The ball's at the 50. Shotgun. Austin. In and out of the arms of Fairholm. And in fairness to Fairholm, that would have been a tough ball to catch. A little bit low and outside, but you know, I, Fairholm probably feels he should have caught the football. We'll get a good look at it now. This is that set that they want to work to Fairholm. They got him one-on-one -on, -one on the defensive back. Watch how much room he's got. He, Jackson has the hips turned. When he makes the breakout, Jackson can't cover it. I know Fairholm will tell you he should have caught that one. Second and 10, again from the 50. Shotgun formation. Flag goes down. Going long. He's got Elgard open, but Elgard can't hang on. Elgard had beaten his man, but the ball hung up there. Remember, Austin is throwing into the wind, but a flag was down at him. That's exactly what happened. He got up in the wind and hung there. And they're going to call Saskatchewan for illegal procedure. Pretty close up there. He had a step on the defender, but when the defender turned and the ball hung up, he was able to knock it down. Illegal procedure. Saskatchewan number 64. Declined. Third down. So that'll bring on Terry Baker, who has had a few problems punting this afternoon. Well below his average, and again, he's punting into the wind. Seems like every time he goes to kick, I look it up that flag on the post. It really picks up intensity, it looks like. The riders will have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter. Again, low end over end punt taken by Tony Hunter. And Hunter just dives across the 40 yard line. Right into the arms of Bob Foley. 
Don't forget our next game on CBC Television. The Calgary Stampeders visit the Sky Dome to take on the Argos. Don Whitman will be back from the Soviet Union to provide you with the play-by-play. -play. Ronnie and Scott will be heading east for what should be a very entertaining game against uh, a suddenly revitalized Calgary Stampeders. Well, they're tough. Playing with a lot of enthusiasm. They seem to be everywhere. That's what, that's what it takes to win. Tracy Ham. And he was intending that for Ellis, and Ellis made a good effort to get to it, but couldn't quite hang on. Well, you have to like the way Craig Ellis finds the hole in his own defense here. On the, watch him come down. Now, he's looking. There, right, you see the zone. He breaks. The clock is running. 5.57 remaining in the third quarter. Saskatchewan lead 27-25. Second and 10 Eskimos from the 40. Ham with time to a wide open Ellis. You're right about Ellis finding the seams. He's doing it perfectly. Boy, he found it again. When Tracy Ham went to throw the football, even though Saskatchewan dropped back in his own, there was not one green jersey between the throw and the receiver. That's an easy throw for Tracy Ham. Four receptions for 106 yards. That's performance for Ellis. Ham with a hole. And he gets down to the 38-yard line. Well, that's what he does so well. That's why Tracy Ham is dangerous. Like Joe Farragelli said, he may be a couple years away from being mature as a quarterback, but right now his athletic ability and his running ability especially gets him out of a lot of trouble. Imagine what he's going to be like two years from now. Quick pass to Ellis. Again, Ellis is open. Ellis down at the 30 by Eddie Lowe. See how fast he found him. He's looking to his left side, turning, just all in one motion, bang. He found him with it in another completion. And another first down. They're calling for a measurement. They had to get down inside the 29-yard line for the first down. This will be close. At one point in this game, it looked as if the Saskatchewan Rough Riders were going to run away and hide on the Edmonton Eskimos. But the Eskimos have baffled back late in the second quarter, and the third quarter has been all there scoring-wise. I don't think you ever run away and hide on the Eskimos. I don't know what a safe lead is with them. First and 10 from the 29. Ham with a good take. Buys himself a little bit of time. He's being pursued. Ham gets the pass away, and it's almost picked off by the Riders. Albert Brown came so close to a big turnover. I'm not sure that this wasn't a run. I'm not sure Tracy Hand just didn't give him the football. When he doesn't give the football to this man, Reggie Taylor, watch. Now he keeps it. That's the halfback coming on a blitz. He gets outside of him. There's no receivers over there to throw to. The only one's trying to block for him. And then Taylor tries to get open, and it almost ends up in an interception. But it's kind of a strange-looking play. Second and 10 from the 29. Again, Ham has time. Completes it. Touchdown. Craig Ellis. But what a job by Tracy Ham that time. He saw the defensive man, Vince Goldsmith, I believe, looks like he's going to sack him. He runs away from it, and then he stops the body, and he twists it, and he just flips it back against his body to Craig Ellis. And then Craig Ellis finds the end zone. That's a heck of a play. Good execution. Who was the Eskimos quarterback in the first quarter? Surely not the same Tracy Ham. Doesn't look like him. Oh, what a tremendous third quarter Tracy Ham has had for the Eskimos. Let's go. 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 Is good on the point after, so the Edmonton Eskimos go in front. You're watching Foster CFL on CBC. Right now. A touchdown pass from Tracy Ham to that man, Craig Ellis, has given the Eskimos the lead for the first time here at Taylor Field this afternoon over the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Edmonton now on top, 32 to 27, as Marco Sinkar will get set to kick off again, and he has really been booming the ball. Especially with the wind at his back, he gets another high, long kick. Tim McClay at the 10. 
And McCray is brought down just shy of the 20-yard line. Kicked that high and deep and yet only a 10-yard return. Craig Ellis made a nice run after he caught the football. Got to about the three and dove in. Six plays, 70 yards, 222. Took a little longer than the last one, but watch it. Watch Ben Goldsmith. Here he comes. Tracy Ham sees him. Watch his throw. Just turn, flips it to the open area. Now, watch Craig Ellis when he gets to about the two. Dive, just get that ball across the goal line. Good job. First and ten riders. A strike to Narcisse. Now, that's what Ken Austin has got to do more on. That was a nice catch by Narcisse. Austin put it right on the money. Stanley Blair covered him as well as you could. Couldn't strip him of the ball. Narcisse got the hands on it and brought it down. 3.14 to play, third quarter. First and 10 riders from row 33. Austin tripped up just shy of the 35-yard line by Brett Williams, who showed some uh, excellent speed in getting to the quarterback. Boy, sure did. You know, Austin came out of there on a dead run. Williams coming from the inside. You got to remember, he's not the defensive end. He's in the yeah, side of the really tackle. Second and nine. Ham's got a few passing yards today. He, as you say, Steve, after that first quarter, he decided to put this offense in gear. Second and nine now for the Riders. Austin just floats it up, looking for Fairholme. And the pass is batted away by Ennis Jackson. Good coverage. Jackson, on Jackson. In. Five interceptions. I know they want interference. I can't really tell because he went high to go get the football and he got that right hand on it and knocked it down. Safety blitz, it's no one in the middle. That's where Fairholm's going. Look at that. I don't think that's interference. He got that right hand high and batted it. I think that they think Jackson got the left hand on Fairholm as he went up to knock the ball down with the right hand. Well, I think he did too, but I think he knocked that ball down playing the football. A good punt this time from Baker. Tony Hunter under it. And forced out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Don't forget, we've got hockey for you tomorrow. Hockey night in Canada. 7 o'clock, right across the country. The Calgary Flames looking for their third straight win on the Friendship Tour in the Soviet Union. They're in Moscow tomorrow to take on the wings of the Soviet. Don Whitman and Harry Neal providing the play-by-play. -play. Ron McLean will be there. And I'll be in Vancouver at a Hockey Night Canada Control Studio. How do you have a friendship tour when you don't play a hockey game? Huh? <laughs> well, sometimes it's, uh, it's not easy. Get him, get him, get him, go! Taylor. And he's tripped up the 45-yard line by Richie Hall. Vince Goldsmith coming from that outside defensive end position. We'll see Reggie Taylor run right past him. Watch him. He takes the draw from him. You'll see Vince Goldsmith. Six gets four, right by him. Three, Looks seven, like he's going to get outside of Richie Hall, but he tripped him up. Just like Tracy Ham, it seems to have taken Reggie Taylor a little bit longer to get going, but he's now catching up to Tim McRae in that battle we spoke of earlier. Craig Ellis once again. What a game he's had. Lance goes down. Cedric Moses, number 30. Good read by Tracy Ham. No underneath coverage. Fire to strike to Craig Ellis. Unnecessary roughness. This guy's for number 30. First down. Yeah, when Craig Ellis caught this ball, as he turned to go, you could see his head turn, and it was that man, Cedric Moses, had the hand on the face mask. Watch Craig Ellis find the hole. Nobody there. Watch. Stop, turn around, catch the football, look for running room. Right Dennis there. Come there. there it is. He's got a hold of that face mask. That'll cost it. And it did. From the 35, first and 10, Eskimo. Again, it's Ellis over the middle. He is finding something there, and he has become very, very effective. He's being effective, and Tracy Ham is delivering the ball about as well as anybody can. He is just bang. They're right on the numbers. Craig Ellis just keeps pulling them in. He's trying to be the, I think he's got to be the best find of the year for the Eskimos. Look at this. Looks to his left and turns around right on the numbers. Good job. Into the corner looking for Richards. It falls incomplete, and that's one of the few incompletions for Tracy Ham in this third quarter. Craig Ellis well on his way to having on, one of the Keith, best receiving afternoons in the CFL this season. You hear Joe Farragelli saying, hurry it up, hurry it up. 40 seconds left. Let's score. 
right now so we can kick off with the win. That's what he wants to do. The record this season held by Larry Willis, and right now, Craig Ellis is six yards short. And again to Ellis, he's got it. He's down at the five-yard line by Harry Skipper. Great hit by Skipper, but it did not shake the ball loose from number 33, Craig Ellis. Watch him. Just down, break to the outside. Here comes the ball. Here comes the hit. Good hit. Good catch, down to the five. 22 seconds left. And that's the best game by a receiver in the CFL this season. 188 yards, nine receptions, one TD. But credit Tracy Ham for delivering the ball to Craig Ellis, who has that knack of getting open. And he's done it remarkably well against the Riders in the second half. You know, football teams go out and recruit take football more than players. Four Craig Ellis called the Eskimos for a tryout. You think they're happy they gave it to him? 59 receptions on the season. Like Joe said, only takes four seconds to score. If they can score, they can still kick off with the win. Less than 10 seconds remaining in the quarter. Ham under pressure. He's not going to elude the pressure this time. James Curry with the sack for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And that should bring a smile to the face of the coach who hasn't been happy in this third quarter at all. Well, they sent Taylor out. They tried to get him that stuff again with Eddie Lowe, but he's covered pretty well. Nowhere to run. James Curry's there. You see everybody. A little meeting at the quarterback. Do that one more time, and Gregory might even smile. No time left on the scoreboard clock in the third quarter. So this should be the final play. Second and 11. From the 11. And a flag goes down. I don't agree with this call. Go, go. Don't agree with it. I think they got to wave it off because the referee had to put Come the ball on, back. Go. It blew away. There's no infraction on the play. Referee forgot to reset the time count clock. You betcha. You betcha. That ball blew away. The referee blew the whistle. That means they have to go in and put it on the then you got to start that count over, and they did not do it. An addition of guilt from the Zebras. Again, Ham puts it up, and it's in and out of the arms of the intended receiver. Keep right, but he couldn't hang on. Pretty good throw, though. What they tried to do is take right that looks like he's going to go deep. You throw it right at the flag and let right turn around and catch it. This didn't work for him. Harry Skipper got enough of him to stop it. Well, so there goes the gun to end the quarter. We'll be back with fourth quarter action in just a moment. Hello, Ralph. Imagine this. The Eskimos will try to increase their lead by three points as Jerry Cart will attempt a field goal. This one coming from the 17-yard line. One for two today. And he's absolutely perfect. Splits the uprights. And that will make it 35-27 favor of the Eskimos. And if the Saskatchewan Rough Riders can't get something going offensively, the Eskimos are on their way to a 10-1 record. John Gregory's going down. He didn't like that call by the official. Let's see if we can hear it. 389 net yards. They have really come on when you think of what they had net yards in the first quarter. 346 of them in the air. That tells you Tracy Hans having a pretty good day. 17 first downs to draw, not much difference, but the passing yards, they've really come on. And a lot of that has come off the scramble of Tracy Ham. He's been under pressure all afternoon, but he's managed to elude the pressure and throw from the run. Tim McRae at the 40. And they rule that his forward motion was stopped as he crossed the 40-yard line. This program is copyright and is strictly for the private use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or exhibition, in whole or in part, without the express written consent of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, is strictly prohibited. 
Leroy Blue downfield to make the hit on Tim McCray. Big series coming right now. Hoffman has the wind at his back. He catches the belt to Jones. Brent Williams there to make the tackle for the Eskimos. Well, the Eskimos did a pretty good number on him. Number three yards. Austin has to put the ball up right now. Let's see if the Eskimos decide to come after him. If you're joining us late, I'm Steve Armitage along with Ron Lancaster. We're in the fourth quarter here at Taylor Field, Second Virginia. Down. Scott Oak is down on the sidelines. The Eskimos, after trailing pretty well most of the game, are now on top of the Riders, 35-27. And Austin is sacked by Larry Ruck. You can't get there any faster. That's about as fast as a defensive man can get to the quarterback. I know Don Matthews really likes the way Ruck plays football. Watch how fast he is there. One, two, on the third step, he is right in Kent Austin's face. I don't care how fast the receiver is, you cannot get rid of the ball that fast. They were talking about getting a nine-yard drop for Austin. He couldn't have gotten to nine yards. The way Ruck was coming, a great booming punt from Baker just sails over the head of Hunter and into the end zone. So the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will come away with a single point and they now trail 35-28. You're watching Foster CFL on CBC live from Regina. On the bench of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, a bag of ice providing some relief for Jeff Fairholm's left hamstring. He pulled it early, or I should say late in the third quarter, just tried to go on it here early in the fourth quarter and could not. Uh, he's taken himself out of the game, is unsure if he can come back, and that does not help the Rough Riders offensively, Steve, as you would agree, I'm sure. Absolutely, Scott. Uh, Fairholm has been one of the most effective receivers for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders this afternoon, certainly in that first quarter. It's first and 10 Edmonton from the 35. They are into the win. Taylor. A host of green jerseys okay, in pursuit. Right he picked up a yard or two. Well, they ran a counter. They pulled Hector Pathier and Pierre Verseval. Tried to get the defense going and come back again. Run it right at Vince Goldsmith. We'll see Reggie Taylor. He ends up with a one-yard gain. Again, Tracy Ham buys a little time by going outside, but he can't get by Gary Lewis, who pulls him down from behind. Good job by the Saskatchewan secondary. No one open. He started to scramble. Gary Lewis made a big play because if he doesn't make the tackle, he's got the first down. He had turned inside. Gary Lewis is going to force him to get from around a 25-yard line into the win. Good defense. If you've joined us late, you have missed a remarkable comeback by the Edmonton Eskimos. They lead 35-28 after trailing most of the game. But they're in a punting situation now. Albert Brown, bit of a hole. Can he get to the outside? Flags are down back at the 45-yard line, but a tremendous effort from Albert Brown. Great effort, and, you know, that's something Saskatchewan needed. A big play to get going. Albert Brown makes a great return, and it's going to come back. The flag went down immediately. That was almost reminiscent of the uh, job he did against the uh, Toronto Argonauts in returning a kick. Illegal block, Saskatchewan number seven, first down. Don't forget, September to remember, coming up on CBC television, Monday, September the 24th, 8 o'clock, right across the country. A look back at the 1988 Summer Olympics and the Ben Johnson story. A September to remember. First and 10. Pass over the middle, hit somebody, and it falls incomplete. Well, I'll tell you, they are after Austin. Greg Stroman was there. Ruck was coming on the blitz. Braswell was there. They are getting into the backfield in a hurry. Okay, when you get to the quarterback that fast, you force him to gamble. Throw the football, take the hit, and hope that your receiver wins the dog fight for the ball. Austin out of the shotgun formation. Second and 10, ball at the 41. 
Ostrich puts it up and puts it our team. Good for the first down. Stanley Blair covering on the play. They're coming after him again. Uh, right along that line of scrimmage, the Eskimos were coming. Means one-on-one -on -one coverage, no help from the linebackers. That's what Austin needs. Just time to throw the ball. Narcisse will get open, but you got to have time. Austin yep. appears to have much more confidence with the wind at his back. <laughs> I wonder why. First and 10 from the 54. Complete to Narcisse. Then I lost him. I wonder where he's gone. Now I know. He went out of bounds. He's over by the cheerleaders. The point after is good. We have got a tie football game. 35-35 with 11-19 to play in the fourth quarter. Let's see if we can get a shot at this. This would be funny if we could find him. Austin back to throw. I, have, I wondered where he was throwing the football. Look how wide open he is. I guess so. Wilson saying, wait a minute, where'd he come from? He got down the field, put it in the end zone, got six points. Maybe we'll see him coming back in from this angle. There he comes. Come right in off the sideline. That's not a bad play. Put 11 men on the field and have a guy come off the bench. That surprised everybody. <laughs> Certainly surprised the Eskimo defenders that time around. Boy, it sure did. Now, he can't do that. On him. He can't go out there and hide. But when Stanley Blair knocks him out, he can come back in. When you're forced out of the field of play, it's legal. You can't do that intentionally. Keith Wright. Wright. Almost got himself out of trouble. Sean Daniels, with good pursuit, brings him down. Sean Daniels stayed right where he belonged. Him and number 88, Gene Taylor, the new receiver, stayed right where they belong. If you try to run away from them, they'll get you. Austin, we can't believe it. Well, I know Austin can't believe this either. Who said I have nothing to it? <laughs> That may have done wonders for his confidence. What about the confidence of Tracy Ham? We'll find out. First and 10, ball up to 29. Ham brought down from behind by Gary Lewis. Gary Lewis treated him like a rag doll. Then he just reached out there with that big right arm. Dragged Tracy Ham down, but not before Ham's going to get very, very close to nine yards. He needs about a little less than a yard for the first down. 10-33, the clock is running, remaining in the fourth quarter. We're tied at 35. for the Riders' defense. He actually lost about a half a yard. Now the Eskimo punter will try to get him out of trouble. A good punt into the win. Richie Hall. Hall with space. Hall got inside the 
40. Stay with us for this great action from Taylor Field. An animated John Gregory concerned about his team. He shouldn't be the way they've come back to tie this game. Joe Farragelli might be a little bit more concerned at this point the way his defense was stung on that last touchdown drive by the Riders. 9.35 to play, fourth quarter. 35-35. 24-26, that's just about the best all you can ask. A little more pass than the Eskimos, but they did most of their damage with the win. That should be expected. That's why I was right now about 50-50. That'll keep you off balance. From the 39-yard line at the Edmonton Eskimos, the Riders are first and 10. Nelson Jones up the middle. Jones is good for about four or five yards. Stuart Hill there to make the tackle. When you need a big play, defensively, you usually find number 30 around the football. Stuart Hill is there. Danny Bass came right in behind him, and down he went. Under the two yards, big play. Of course, I think we say that a lot. A lot of big plays coming in this game. Second and eight from the 37. Austin in the shotgun. Under pressure. Complete. James Ellington, his first reception of the game, and it's a big one. What you had to like is Austin knew the blitz was coming. Everybody in the park knew that blitz was coming when they showed it. And what he does, throw the ball to the open area, let the receiver go get it. Lead him into the hole, Ellington goes and gets the football. Wilson has to make the tackle. And with that big catch, Ellington moves the ball down to the 27-yard line. First and 10 riders. 8.23 to play fourth quarter. Austin's going to run. He's got some room. And then he goes down just shy of the 10-yard line. Falling in front of Stanley Blair. They put, they put all that pressure on the quarterback in the middle. And they know he's in the pocket. When you commit yourself, he gets outside and runs. There you got a little bump coverage, a little action downfield. Stanley Blair is a physical corner anyway. He's trying to get there to help out Austin wisely. Just hit the deck. You gained the yardage. That's all you want. Blair making sure he didn't knock him out of bounds this time, so he didn't lose him. Again, Ellingson coming up with a big catch. Nothing wrong with blitzing a safety man. That time he blitzed on Wilson. But number 24, Hildebrandt, got to get over there to cover that slot back, and he didn't get there in time, and Ellingson's wide open. They called for the change. They're going to measure this one. Had to get down to the two-yard line for the first down. It's very close. 7.28 to play. Fourth quarter. We're tied at 35. It was all riders in the first quarter. The Eskimos began to come back in the second, late in the second. Really turned it on in the third. And now the riders have pumped it up a notch, and they have come on strong in the fourth quarter. The wind has been a big factor in this game for both quarterbacks. I was thinking about that. You know, the wind is, a, as you said, a big, big factor, but you somehow got to mentally block it out and play against it. You, you cannot hang on. Second and inches. And the quarterback, Austin, keeps and should have the first down. He does. So it'll be first and goal from the one. What do you go with here, Coach? Uh, I think you give it to Milton Jones. Left side. Touchdown, Riders! Give it to Milton Jones. I figure first down, give it to the running back. If he doesn't get in, then you yourself two shots from the one, you'll get in. Austin didn't waste any time. He just took it on first down. Ridgeway. 
with the point after to make it 42-35. This is Foster's CFL on CBC. You're going to like the taste of Foster's draft. 39 yards. You've got to get points when you can start that close to the goal line. Six plays to get in there. But watch it. Check it Decide where you're going. Take the ball. Get behind the shoulder pad. Get bent at the waist. And if that line will come off firing, you'll get into the end zone. With that line come off. That means they get at least a stalemate. All you need is like a step and a half. Ball forward. Cross that last line. Austin knew he was in there. He knew it. He wasn't even in doubt. But the way this game has gone, don't go away, folks. Keith Wright at the 10. And forced out of bounds at the 23-yard line by Alipati. Well, we talk about that wind a lot. I, when, you, when you're going against the wind, and they, as they are right now, you have to block it out mentally and just go play football. Don't worry about it. It's there, and it's going to stay there. See, Ken Austin talked with the line coach, Gary Hoffman, who talked to the squatters upstairs. Whatever they're saying, he agrees with. But Tracy Hand now, great statistics. They're great. Four touchdown passes. But now he's got to prove he can move the ball against the wind and get some points. He starts from the 23-yard line. First and 10 Eskimos. Lots of time. He dumps it off. Blake Marshall. And Marshall just puts his head down, but he's forced out of bounds by Cedric Moses. Well, we talk about the Eskimo dream. Here's Blake Marshall, 230-pounder out of Western Ontario. They draft Mike Soles, who's running back out of the McGill. Two excellent Canadian young running backs. One of this, he gets turned up field. If you're Cedric Moses, you don't want to take him on head-to-head. -head. You get the worst of that every time. Especially when he's got a full head of steam. First and 10 from the 40. Ham eludes the rush and then blows out of bounds. No flags down, but there was no question that Ham was strong in desperation there. That's a great pass. Tracy, I think he's in section 25J. Tracy Ham, he was open. Tracy <laughs> Ham found the open receiver. The he'll, guy in the red shirt was not covered. He'll point to him and say, sure. <laughs> That's a wise throw. He was. When he sent all his people across the field and then rolled to it, the Saskatchewan defense, there were enough jerseys over there, they had everybody covered. Just throw it away. 5.50 to play, fourth quarter, clock is running. Ham, not going to get away this time. Bobby Jurison in on top of the Eskimo quarterback. Well, that's Saskatchewan defense now. Ready to go. Bobby Jerson, healthy. John Gregory made a big toss out of that. That's Ted Heath. That's his boy. Those guys up front. They got seven sacks today. They came in with 33, leading the league. They now have 40. But here they come. They try to spin away from Jerson. No, nothing doing. He got it. Down he went. Ham has done that so well all afternoon, but he was not about to elude Jerson that time. Jerson had a hand on him and pulled him down. Hector Papier just couldn't control Jerson. That upfield rush, he got to the outside shoulder, then he turns into the quarterback, and Bobby Jerson records sack number seven. The hold-up in play is what it was. Looks like Keith Wright has some cramps the way he got him off the field. Speaking of Hector Papier, his old team, St. Mary's, did a pretty good job yesterday, didn't they? Yeah, well, you know, we talk a lot about these colleges, but that quarterback at St. Mary's is awfully good. He may be the best football player in the country. Talking about first win. Outstanding young quarterback. Richie Hall. Fumbles, but he recovers the loose Flag ball. The play, Flag goes pass. down. Taken by Richie Hall. Saskatchewan number 57, first down. Bob Foley. I knew he, it must have been him because he was really upset walking off the field. Don't forget our next game, Saturday at 7.30 Eastern time, the Stampeders 
in a rematch against the Argos. The Argos losers at McMahon the other night. They'll be out for revenge. The Calgary Stampeders now setting their sights squarely on second place in the West. Richie Hall's injured ball player having got for not tending to him. You talking about St. Mary's, that's your old school. You got a big event coming soon, don't you? 25 years ago, we won the Atlantic Bowl in 1964. Gonna have a reunion first week of November. Looking forward to it. Getting that old team back together. Tom, are you gonna be there? I'm gonna try. You're gonna get out and play a little touch football? No way. No See if you can still throw it, Steve. Get out I know there and throw I that ball around. I know I can. By the way, Acadia won also. Are you going to give us a score? 48 nothing. 48 nothing over Mount Allison Mountain. To McCray. Big hole. And McCray down to the 45 yard line. I kill the brand. And John Gregory said to us, he said at the press conference yesterday, you will not run the football consistently on the Eskimos, but you will break some big plays. Here's what he was talking about. Tim McCray steps right between Stevenson and Illibrand, and there he goes. Forces Hildebrand to bring him down. 4.38 to play, fourth quarter. Riders lead 42-35. They're on the move. Again, it's McCray. This time, as he hits the line of scrimmage, He's nailed by Brian Warren. <laughs> Brian Warren, Joe Fergelli was saying yesterday, he's on the roster this week because he didn't have another receiver to put on there. I think Warren, a heck of a football player, it shows you the depth that the Eskimos have. Brian Warren's an outstanding linebacker, and he can't find a spot. There's a lot of teams that would find him a spot in a hurry. A gain of only one on the play, second and nine from the 44. Austin floats one up, and almost a great one-handed grab by Ray Elgard. Did a bit of a juggling act. Couldn't pull it down. Couldn't get control. Probably a good thing he got that hand on it. Stanley Blair was coming with that ball in the air. It looked like he had a shot at it. Look at the ball. Watch him go up with one hand. Number five, Blair, he was waiting on it to come down. Thought he'd have an interception. A little disappointed that Elgard touched it. Ridgeway with the wind at his back, why not try a 50-yard field goal attempt? Just over the 50-yard line. It's a chip shot today. He's got the legs. It's good! He's got a flag on the play, so let's play and see who this is again. All this cheering, maybe a little immature. Early indication from the Riders, which you know against the Eskimos. Yeah, you know what I was wondering? They did it earlier in the game. Somebody from Edmonton, and I did, never got the number earlier. They run up and they pushed off somebody's back and jumped high to try to block it. I think that's illegal. You can't use another person as a pyramid. Illegal procedure pyramiding on the defense, Edmonton, is declined. Field goal. They did this before. And they didn't call it. Here comes Jackson. Watch him. He steps on Brett Williams. Tries to pyramid. That is illegal. They didn't call it earlier, but they sure caught him this time. So it's now a 10-point lead for the Riders. 45-35 with 3.39 to play in the fourth quarter. Tracy Hamm needs a major score. In a hurry. Fires over the middle. Interceptor. by Glenn Suter. What happened, Marshall Sinkar fell down as he was running a hook pattern, and bang, 27, Glenn Suter was there to make the interception. A huge turnover for the Riders. Glenn Suter, his second pickoff of the season. 3.18 to play, fourth quarter. 45-35, Riders lead. First and 10 from the 45. McCray. Rest of the line of scrimmage, maybe a half a yard, no more. Larry Ruck is there to bring him down. Michelle Bourgeois also in there. Yes, roll all their people in, they all get a chance to play. We'll be back with more action from the fourth quarter right after this. 
game today. It's over on the three minutes remaining to play in the fourth quarter here at Taylor Field in Regina. It would appear now that the Edmonton Eskimos are headed for only their second loss of the season. They came in with a record of nine and one. And it would be a huge victory for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. They lead by 10. Fair Gelly doesn't look any different now with the 10 point deficit that he did when they were scoring all those touchdowns in the third quarter. Kind of relaxed. A tough game in which to pick the Foster's MVP, but we will have one for you right after the final gun. You'd have to think it might be between Tracy Ham and Austin. You could throw in Craig Ellis if you want. All in contention for the Foster's MVP. From the shotgun, Austin. Long pass. Intercepted. Still life yet for the Eskimos. A big interception. A few seconds ago, it was the Riders picking off Ham. Now the Eskimos have picked off Austin. Stanley Blair. Tried to get a touchdown. Tried to go deep. What they did is send the wide receiver through to clear it out and bring Elgard into the flat and upfield. And what happened? He overthrows it. Stanley Blair makes a nice interception, just can't return it. So he's got the receiver down the middle now, out to the sideline, turn up field, overthrows him. Stanley Blair makes the interception. Got a long way to go and a short time to do it. 2.43 to be exact. First and 10 Eskimos, the ball at their own eight yard line. Ham over the middle. And place it to Tom Richards. French to his right a little bit, looks for that throwback. If it's not there, he's got that inside receiver. In this case, Richards coming right across the middle, finds the hole, and hits him. Moves the ball into the 23 yard line for the eight. And the Eskimos are now first and 10. And gets out of trouble. And then is brought down by Eddie Lowe. Follow that running around. Good job downfield. Don't come up. You come up, allow him to throw it over your head. Make him run with the football. The clock is running. Uh, 2.23 to play, fourth quarter. And with the sideline pass to Tom Richards. And he's complete to Richards. And you touch. The head of Network Sports is Arthur Smith. The senior producer of the CFL on CBC is Lee Herberman. Today's game from Taylor Field, produced by Steve Lansky. Our director this afternoon is Ron Harrison. Our isolation director, Mo Waters. And thank you to the rest of the crew who did such a great job this afternoon in providing you with pictures and sound from Taylor Field. Measurement shows third and in inches. That's what the delay was while they measured for the first down. Good for Saskatchewan. The clock will run a few more seconds off. Tracy Ham. Eskimos with little choice but to go with it. They trail by 10. First down. And they get the necessary yardage to keep the drive alive. Come on, let's go, let's go. Get them on the ball, get it called. You know you got to throw it. They need a touchdown and a field goal to force overtime. Just dumps it over the middle. Richards. And Richards up across the 40-yard line, brought down at the 41. Richards has been the forgotten man today. Craig Ellis, the favorite receiver inside. But Tom Richards catch the football also. Tracy Ham hurting a little bit. Bobby Jerson is also down for Saskatchewan. About five yards apart back there. Rick Warman gonna have to warm up. Arm loose. A very difficult situation for Rick Warman to come in because Tracy Ham has had such a hot hand all afternoon, although it's cooled off in the fourth quarter somewhat. Now let's see what happens. We're gonna get a good look at it. We see Curry and Jerison both. Tracy Ham dumps it off. Ooh, come in, throw that arm right around that knee area. That's right where Tracy Ham grabbing. That's what they're checking on is his left leg. Checking the knee. You always hate to see that. Bobby Jerson's down. It's been a tough physical ball game. Rick Warman just did the press conference. Joe Fergalli had him 
Jones. Had a couple of questions about his quarterbacks. You know, when he was talking about Tracy Ham's ability to get out and run and make things happen. He says, Rex, this is a great drop back passer. He says, we would use him to run only if we wanted to kill the fourth quarter. And Rick's not the runner that that man is. You can see by the expression on Tracy Ham's face that he's in considerable pain. Bobby Jurison appears to be okay. He's getting up. He'll come off the field under his own steam. And listen to the hand he gets. We were talking today. Coach Gregory said they've been as they are as healthy now as they have been since the second game of the season. And this is one of the people that he mentioned that Jurison's finally back at 100 percent He's limping a little bit on one leg, hands limping on the other. Get Bourgeois and them out there, they can just carry him. Ham coming off with a great deal, deal more difficulty than Bobby Jurison did. Let's hope that's not a serious injury because that is one of the fine young quarterbacks in the Canadian game today. Tracy Ham, a one afternoon he's had. At one point in this game, the Eskimos were not a factor. He rallied them, put them in front, and then the Riders came on in the fourth quarter with the wind at their back to take the lead. Rick Warman in there now. Second down and two. A fumble. Got lucky, got it back, made the first down. I think they'll have a first and 10. Blake Marshall lost control of it, trying to spin and turn for more yardage. 157 to play. Warner turning to his right. Unloads into the sideline, intending for Tom Richards, but Richards had no hope at all of getting that ball. Tracy Ham resting that left knee on the bench. I don't think we'll see Tracy Ham again this afternoon. Uh, Rick Warner, I got on that pass of trying to find the guy in the red shirt. Second and ten from the 45. 150 to play. Flags go down. Pass over the middle to Craig Ellis. Ellis tripped up. Once he crossed the 50 yard line, Richie Hall there to make the tackle. I, I think it's going to come back. I think we're going to get it. Marker. Illegal procedure. The left tackle and left guard in this case, it was Hector Pottier and Pierre Versaval move before the snap. They'll bring this one back. Illegal procedure. Edmonton number 54. Second down repeated. Now repeated. Pierre Versaval, the right and left guard. Lifted that hand, and he lifted the hand. Pottier moved. This will see that. Warman brought down. Steve Crane in the get to Warman. Warman's better off going straight back in the pocket, throw the football. He's a little taller, six foot two. Just go back there and throw it. That's what he does best. Chances of winning the game aren't very good anyway, so get back there and throw it. Do what you do best. Clock is running, and at 34. Warman, complete to Ellis. Ellis goes backwards. He does not have the first down. Glenn Suter there to make the tackle on Ellis. standing ovation for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders defense who have risen to the occasion against a very good offense. Fourth quarter they've really dominated the Eskimos. They have not allowed them very many yards. I was going to be first in Saskatchewan. Not a good sign right there. When the guy goes off in the golf cart. Tracy Ham. He's the one that makes the Eskimos go. You know, he's so quick. I hate to see that happen to him. Austin has the first down at the 30-yard line. Flags go down. Tempers are running very short now 
to number 44. Rathwell did something that Roger Alday didn't like, and Alday let him know about it in a hurry. Even the mascot's getting into this one. He better get out of there. Looks like we got a disqualification coming up. this one out. Minute 19 to play in the fourth quarter. What has been a very entertaining game, a hard fought game on both sides of the line has turned a little ugly. You hate to see it. Some of the riders are shaking hands with the Eskimos, but obviously a lot of ill feeling. Here's the call. Unnecessary roughness piling on. 44 Edmonton. Rough play, punching. 44 Edmonton disqualified. Unnecessary rough. Oh, that'll that'll please a lot of people in the league. Unnecessary roughness. 44 Saskatchewan. Why do you say that? Uh, he has down. a tendency to, to get involved in a little of this almost every game. And only it's going to be a matter of time until somebody's going to get him. That's it for Braswell. I'll tell you, Rod Rod is a pretty tough character. Good guy, played a lot of football games in a row, about like 208 or nine games in a row. Now the fans are getting in the act. If he makes it, Saskatchewan will put 51 points on the board against a defense that was reputed to be the best in the CFL. Still is a pretty good defense. That's it's just that they've taken a beating this afternoon. You're going to take beatings every now and then. This is a good football team. Saskatchewan just met the challenge today. And you have to go out week after week and prove you're the best. Closer if he misses it. We get two tries here. Maybe they're waiting for a dust. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, they wouldn't have to wait long. Seems like a, the wind will die down, and then all of a sudden, bang, it really picks up. Gets behind. I think Ridgeway could reach it without the wind. I think he can kick for 58 yards. Bass makes his way to the sidelines. Time is in. Bridgeway will try this 58 yarder. Not little illegal motion there for the snap of the ball. They'll reset and do it again. We'll get five yards closer unless it's procedure. Edmonton. Oh. We'll get five yards closer. Well, you heard him talking about that possibility on the uh, rider bench. And that's exactly what's happened. So we'll make it a little easier for Ridgeway. This time, it'll come from the 53-yard line. He's got the legs, but it's wide. And Hunter will run it out. And steps out of bounds to end this game. And we've got a tussle on the field. The ill feelings that erupted late in the fourth quarter have spilled over into the post game. Let's hope they can break this one up early. And the players will shake hands on the 48-35, the final count. That's Brett Williams and Bob Foley. I don't know if you know that. For the game, they were talking down on the field. Something happened during the football game. How said it? We're still down here yapping at one another. Now it's Williams and somebody else. The two coaches shake hands. The final score, once again, from Taylor Field in Regina.
Saskatchewan win it 48 to 35 over the Eskimos.